Tiny homes meant for the homeless sit empty tonight. A project by Last Chance Ministries was shut down by the city due to safety concerns and because proper permits were never obtained. Patty Santos tells us how the city is now trying to work with the church leader, Pastor Jimmy Robles, to get the homes in use. It's in my house and um, <laughs> I'm waiting to get my keys. But Juan Chavez hasn't gotten a chance to move in just yet. I talked to my board of directors. Because Last Chance Ministries failed to get the zoning changed and permits for the tiny homes. The main thing that he needs to do is apply for his uh, building permits and really his zoning change applications. Michael so Shannon starts. says the city first got wind of the project. Chavez will be the first to move in. When they saw the story about the transitional homes construction on KSET earlier this year. We went and inspected and we found it was in violation. So we issued notices saying, uh, please stop. The city says in March, the church was given a 10 day notice of violation. In April, they were handed two fines. In May, more citations. Today, they've gotten a total of 61 citations dealing with safety violations like improper plumbing and electrical wiring. The city says they've been working with the church to get these tiny homes up to compliance. In the spring, Case had even covered the ribbon cutting for them. That's when the city decided to close the gates on the project. So at that point, we had to force him to stop using citations and, and, and actually pulling power from the entire site. Shannon says there's no doubt the goal to help the homeless is well intended, but the rules are for the protection of the occupants and neighbors. Pastor Jimmy Robles declined an interview, but issued a statement saying they are in talks with the city. Quote, I understand that there will be challenges as there are with any new project, especially for something that's never been done before within Bear County. Neighbors hope something gets figured out so the tiny homes don't sit vacant. And Shannon says the first thing that has to happen is a request that would eventually end up before city council to change the zoning from a multifamily to a human services campus. But that could take months. Then they can address the issues with the proper permits to make sure that these tiny homes or sheds are safe. Myra.